About standardized tests, the essential challenge is this. Minimize the anxiety kids feel and maximize their test scores. And that means coming up with a plan starting early in high school. They should start thinking about it really at the end of 10th grade because I encourage students to start studying a little bit at the end of 10th grade just to become familiar with it. Many students will take the PSAT in October of their junior year, so it's a great time to be exposed to it early on. And then she says kids need to prepare, and for that they may need their parents' help. So maybe getting them some outside tutoring or enrolling them in a class, buying books so they have practice tests. It's really important for students to take many practice tests before the real test. Um, so they get acclimated with the exam. Many experts also recommend that students take both tests. Everybody's looking for a competitive advantage and they figure that if they don't do as well on one, they can take the, the other and hopefully do better and then submit their better score to a uh, college or university. We're finding out more and more colleges are accepting both. So if you do happen to score higher on one versus the other, you would submit the test that you scored the best on. And kids can improve their score if they've learned some of the tips and techniques of taking the test. When should I guess and when should I not guess? How should I budget my time when I'm taking this test? Should I go in numerical order, one by one, and answer the questions that way? Or should I go and answer the questions that I know first and then go back? There are all kinds of strategies that we adults can teach kids to take the test. The bottom line, there's no better way to learn those strategies than taking the test over and over again. I think it's essential to take about eight practice tests for the real test um, because studies have also shown that students who do well on the S SAT or ACT do well because they know how to take that test. So the more practice you get, the better. It increases familiarity decreases anxiety. You become more and more comfortable with it and you're less anxious. What else? Get the directions to the test beforehand. Have your child read them and know them well. And if you know the directions and you get those down, then you don't have to spend even one minute reading the directions. You can go right in to the test and they'll really help you later on if you want to go back and check answers. And about the tension and anxiety that surrounds the test, there is this. Kids need to keep the test in perspective, and you can help. We get very caught up and obsessed by testing, the SAT and the ACT. And one of the secrets or the habits of high academic achievers is that they keep the test in perspective. Betty Gary, for example, she knows her daughter is about to take the SAT and is worried about it. She is a perfectionist, so I do a lot of talking to her about, you know, whatever happens is okay. I basically um, just explained that even if you do extremely well, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get into the exact college of your choice. And conversely, if you don't do that well, you might get into a college that's just right for you. About perspective, one more thing. The ACT and the SAT are just one part of getting into college. Both of them are one measure, one criteria, along with your transcript, your recommendations, uh, your activities, and your SATs or ACTs. Those are the four, four criteria, and by far the most important of them is your transcript. Also make sure your children know that their score doesn't change who they are or how you feel about them, because some kids get confused. That your worth has to do with how well that you perform, and when you do that, the stakes are a lot higher. Of, of not performing well. In the end, if you've done everything else, all that's left is common sense. Get a good night's nice rest, eat a balanced meal, come to school uh, dressed comfortably, try to keep peace at home. Uh, don't make a quarrel with your parents the night before a major test. Don't break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs>
Anxiety and test scores get worse the longer you wait. You don't want to study a month before the test and then all of a sudden test day comes around and it's fall of your senior year, it's October or November, and first of all, you don't have many retake dates at that point, so it's, you get what you get. And secondly, you're gonna be rushing and cramming, and cramming is never a good idea. That's why I say start early. And if you do, you can be sure that in the end, your children will get into a school that's right for them, that fits who they are. Finally, from one child to yours, this advice. Don't stress about it. Just be well prepared. I've, I know that they always say have a good morning breakfast, but that really does help.